Welcome everyone to Friday D and D. Uh, the actual time is up in the corner. It's January seventh. Uh, we are here with myself, Bork Seventeen, playing Sarah Snow, Dying Danger, playing Drusilla Gravemore, and the one and only Man Bear, who's a DM. God help us all. But <laughs> we're gonna. It's I don't know what are we at eighth episode technically or eighth session. I have no clue. I forgot by now. I feel like it's been eight. I feel like it's been like four since we got back to this campaign. Oh, uh, I mean, I actually couldn't tell you. I can't. I can't use the excuse that you died quite a bit because I haven't really. Actually, you've you've done the most since we've got back. So, um, yeah, that's true. But yeah, I'm actually just remembering where I was last time and did not plan for this. So this will be fun. My dog just threw something on the ground. Let me get that. Okay, so let's hand it off to the man bear. We can get ourselves a recap. Okay, welcome all, welcome all. So, this session is a bit of a hodgepodge <laughs> due to Bork's habits of doing things he is specifically told not to do several times by any DM, strictly because he was told not to do it. <laughs> I feel like that is a goal of his in every campaign we play. Uh, so we left off. The girls had spent a week upgrading the townsfolk, patrolling, helping build new defenses. There was an incident in which there was a fight outside of Malice's church. Uh, Drusilla started calling Malice a hypocrite and almost created another fight before Sarah Snow stepped in and managed to calm everybody down. Technically, but there I got there tension. first. This is true. Sarah was <laughs> there first, even though Drusilla did cause problems. Uh... Hang on, my internet's dying. I'm just waiting. Okay. Um, you're gonna have to repeat that. Uh, my Discord froze right after you said that. Right after I jumped in and told you that I was there first, and you're like, "Yeah, but okay." Drusilla made some issues and then froze. Okay. See how many hands are with me? Tell me when I'm good to go. Go ahead. Uh, so Drusilla stepped in and made some problems, even though Sarah was there. Sarah then stepped in and cooled things off, preventing Malice and Drusilla from getting into it in the middle of the street. Uh, this brought on some open complaints from Bylorn, Captain of the City Guard, who fears Malice's intentions and fears that if there is not some sort of balance created, then his church, cult, whatever you want to call it, will eventually take over Golden Hill and the guards will become basically useless and everybody will follow Malice's rules, which is, who knows, good, bad, sideways. Um, after that, they finished out their week of training and construction and went into their weekend. Uh, we did Trusilla's weekend first because she simply wanted to spend her time creating soul stones, which was time consuming, but ultimately successful. And then we come to the complication that is Sarah Snow, who even though was warned several times by several different factions and several different people that she should not step foot into the capital area of Golden Hill where the castle is, she decided to do it anyway and managed to convince the guards to bring her to the king. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do much more than that today, honestly. Um, I'm kind of wrecked from work this week, but I want to get this done and I want to do it right. So we'll see how it goes. Take your time. My internet's kind of shoddy right now, too. Um, so yeah, I, I just wanted to clarify. I wasn't told I couldn't 
go in there. I just, or yeah, that I shouldn't go in there necessarily. I was just told that I'm wanted in there and it would be a bad idea. Um, that is the definition of telling you, you should not go in there. You are wanted and they will kill you and you should not go there. <laughs> so, so no one necessarily told me not to go there. Yeah. So people maybe have told me it's a bad idea, but I have my reasons. Uh, okay. I but we're going to play it out. We're going to see. Is Sarah going to push her luck a little too far? And who knows? Or is she going to manage to get whatever she wants done accomplished without, you know, being burnt to a crisp? Is Drusilla we'll going to wind up sitting around the, the inn like a lost puppy wondering where her companion is? Yeah, we can only Sarah hope so. Sarah hasn't come back for like six days. What the heck's going on? Um... <laughs> All right, paint paint the picture here. Okay, so as we left off, Sarah was banked and then led to the castle. Uh, she was warned by the guards that this is shipment week, and thus the king is going to be heavy into his cups, as well as probably irritable. Um, she insisted on having a message for the king, and the guard decided that, who knows, maybe it'll be funny if something were to happen and let her in. Um, so as of right now, all Sarah Snow sees is the inside of a burlap bag. Her hands are tied behind her, and she is marching slowly through the actual... Rich Person Hill of Golden Hill City. Uh, it will take probably a couple minutes to get up to the capital. At which point, Sarah starts to hear mumbles and whispers. Nothing loud enough for her to actually hear. Uh, a few little things. Sorry, like I said, I'm wrecked from work. I'm really tired. Okay, um... Like I said, mumbles. Doesn't really hear anything. Uh, then the door opens and she's let inside. Uh, when your mask is finally taken off, there is a cart in front of you. Like a, like a hotel trolley cart. Right? Yeah. And on the cart is barrels. Like little, like dozens of mini kegs. And you see, uh, you see some stamp with the the same symbol you remember from the bar in the cactus town so you know that that is the cactus whiskey and then you see some stamps you don't recognize at all um in front of you is what looks like a servant and he seems super relieved like just relieved that he doesn't have to do this anymore and you hear from the guard he says okay you want to go see the king? Here you go. Take him his ale. Well, uh, maybe we won't lose a servant this month. <laughs> okay. Before we get to the stuff that uh going in there, can uh I use my tracking skill to remember like the path we walked um i'm just gonna say in all fairness you've been to this capital several times you've been in the castle several times 70 years ago and nothing's changed so you still know the layout okay the guards okay. just don't know that gotcha 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 um first of all i want to ask the uh guard can i have the sack back if he looks at you like uh why um, you know, probably a bad idea. Fine, you you, you twist my arm. <laughs> he just shrugs. Uh, and I go, okay, so do do I go in the front door? Or do I go in the side door? So there's just one door in front of you. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, have some other preparation questions, but I, I could do it on the fly. Um, so I, I start walking uh, 
I, I pulled the uh, cart in backwards through the doors because that's the proper way of doing it. And I'm not looking directly at the king right away. Okay. Um. So yeah, I walked the ale or the the cart of Alchemahal into the room. Um. You as you walk in, you're backwards, so you can't really see much. You see the door in front of you. You can tell you're not in the um. The great entrance hall that you went in before in the past. You're not in the, you know, the meeting chamber. You're more in what looks to be a private room. It's smaller, clearly. Um, as you're backing in, all you can really see is the door, the wall in front of you. And to the right um, is just like the stack of empty bag, empty barrels, empty Little, like I said, like the little mini kegs you're carrying, but they're all empty. You see torch marks on some of them, and you actually see like a decent mound of ash as if they're just being burnt where they lay instead of being taken away when they're empty. Hmm, interesting. I, I, I make note of it. I, uh, I, I call, uh, where, where would you want these, Your Honor? Or, not your honor. It's not a judge. But yeah, that that uh, that proper phrase. He uh, he just he uh, he looks at you. He goes, "You knew, just just bring him here, damn it." Uh, so I want to walk around, kind of hiding who I am. Um, initially, like try, try not to look, and I walk to the other side so I can guide them by him um what does he look like is he in his human form or his dragon form yeah he's in his human form um you do see like huge bags under his eyes like as if he hasn't slept in who knows how long but his eyes are also like lidded very very lidded as if he's you know wasted not not the I'm just buzzing and I'm happy look, but the oh my god, I'm gonna fall over drunk look. Uh he's got his golden armor on, but it is not shining like you remember. Um it actually looks like parts of it are kind of like chipping away, almost like um well you already know he's a dragon, so almost like a dragon scales falling off. You can see, like, there's pieces missing from his armor where there shouldn't be possible for pieces to miss. Ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I, I uh, um, I, I push it up next to him, and I go, uh, here you go, my king. You just kind of grumble and goes to that. Uh, get out of here. And then he grabs a keg. He grabs a mini keg in one hand. You hear like the wood crunch under his fingers as he picks it up and starts slamming it down, like just chugging on this keg. Uh, uh, I, I, I say uh, it's kind of like because I, I, I'm nervous to a point. Be like, um, Your Highness, uh, are you sure you don't want me to clean up your armor for you? It's looking a little more ratted than I remember. Still just chugging away, but as he's chugging, you see his free hand kind of like brush at his chest, like he's brushing crumbs off his chest. And then he just keeps drinking, just downing his keg. Um. I, uh... Actually, Your Highness, I I came here for another purpose. At this, he, you hear uh, like kind of like a, a hiccup, and then he throws the keg at the wall towards the pile, and it uh, it hits the pile and like falls down. It doesn't shatter, but it you know it's pretty fucked up. Yeah, he looks at you and he goes, "Do I?" No, you talking to 
me, girl. And he grabs another keg and starts drinking it the same way he was. I, I'm i feeling very proper, so I, I want to bow, like, get down on one knee like adventurers normally do. Mm -hmm. And I go, um... I'm I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch what you were asking. He he doesn't he just keeps chugging, like you know, once once you're starting to see a trend, once he has a keg up to his mouth, he won't stop until it's gone. Gotcha. So you're you're welcome to either sit there and wait until he's done with that or try to say something else. Um, I'll wait for now. Wait for his next one. Or wait till the in-between. Okay. So he, uh, he finishes it up. Throws it against the wall again. What was your question again? Sorry. Uh, I asked him, I'm like, I didn't quite hear what you, what you asked of me. Do I know you, girl, who thinks she can talk? to me and then he hiccups and you actually see like a little bit of a little bit of regurgitation come out and kind of like come down his beard what you remember being a nice white beard shining pearly white beard is just filthy and the, the little bit of regurgitation kind of draws your your eye to that uh he kind of like starts reaching for another keg i i i want to okay i want to be a little cryptic. Um, I say, currently no. Uh, I knew of, or I knew a man in shiny gold armor and uh, white shimmering beard a while back. He, uh... I don't hear a noise, buddy. Yeah, go for it. Um, he goes, he looks at you, and he kind of goes a little cross-eyed for a second. You hear him mumbling a roll perception check. Okay, now, now it's the real truth. Do I have Donnie Danger luck or my own luck? Eh, looks like you're doing pretty good this time. You don't hear any, you don't hear much <laughs> of it, but you hear the words... <laughs> Lucid nature, not real. Uh, before he even finishes his mumbling, he's got his keg that he just grabbed and up to his mouth, and he's drinking again. Pizza Two of these pizzas are connected. I I'm gonna stay in this position till the end of this one. You don't want to ask something while he's drinking. Oh, I'll, I'll let him drink. All right. So he finishes this one. Uh, you can tell now you've got like six kegs left on this cart. Um, and he finishes it and throws it against the wall and starts reaching for his next one. You know, uh, yes. Um. Shit. What was I gonna say? I oh yeah. I uh, I'm not too familiar with you myself currently either, cause uh, I haven't seen you like this before. He looks at you again and like really tries. You actually see his eyes open a little bit more, and he really tries to look at you. But when he does, you see a flash of, like, two or three emotions, and one of them very clearly stands out to you as anger. But before, like, again, before everything finishes up, he's got his next keg in his mouth, and he's chugging. Okay. Okay. You gonna wait again or just let him finish again? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna stand up while he's chugging, and I, I want to go to him, and I'm like, 
But there's neither here or there. I come to you with a warning. Uh, when you get like, how close are you thinking about getting? Uh, I mean, not that close. Like the cart is. I mean, I'm picturing him sitting, maybe not on a throne, but like a type, a secondary throne. The cart yeah, is like is just next to him, basically like a desk chair. Oh, yeah, and the cart is next to him. Yeah, I don't know, like twelve feet away. Okay, uh, so you you kind of get a little closer than most people would ever dare get to him. As he's chugging, uh, roll a reflex check. Wait, it's 12 feet? Oh, that may be closer than I was thinking. Okay. Either way, roll a reflex. 21. Nice. Uh, as he finishes, you you just in time notice the, the ceremonial hiccup as he finishes his keg, and you manage to duck as he is uh, throwing the keg against his pile. And you still see the same look on his face as when he was drinking the first time. You see that anger. And you hear from him, Go away, hallucination. I drink to get rid of you. Why do you haunt me? And you see a little bit of his draconic scales like appearing on his face as his anger starts to grow. And he grabs another keg and starts chugging it. But as he's chugging, you you kind of notice that the the scale and the draconic look to his face starts to fade away back to that human look. Oh. Okay. 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 I go. Uh, oh, uh, I'm. I have to give you this message. But then I will go. I I will take my leave. But it's not until after I give you this message that I can go. Are you gonna wait for him to finish drinking and reply to that, or are you just gonna give him the message while he drinks? Uh, wait for his reply. So yeah, uh, he again finishes. Roll reflex, since you haven't moved. Thirteen. This time you're a little you're a little distracted by the uh, the uh, appearance of his scales and it actually shakes you a little bit so you don't manage to duck the barrel in time. You take eight damage. Okay. Uh, as the barrel hits you, you kind of you kind of it hits you on the shoulder and it sends you flying and you kind of like land real hard next to the wall and you, your shoulder hits the wall and you're kind of slumped there. And he goes, ah, 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 baby, hallucination go flying. Okay, can I roll ah. a reflex check to land on my feet instead? You can try, sure. I kind of like that, though. Or 12. You, you fail. You land on your shoulder. Okay. <laughs> he laughs at you. And like I say, he goes, hallucination go flying. Well, what can hallucination say that I haven't heard a million times over the last decades? I didn't know. Uh, uh, His giddiness from seeing you flying actually kind of like tampers down his anger a little bit. But you can still see like in the parts of his eyes that you can actually see that there's just they're glassy, almost like he he's not there as he grabs his next keg and starts chugging. It is water. You can drink it. Okay, so I want to walk up. I'll go the same. Uh, I'll go to the same distance, twelve feet. You know, I want to be consistent. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, I I walk up and I go. uh, Hi, James. Yes, that. uh, I'm a little off my game today. You know, had a bag over my head for most of the time, but. Uh. It is important that I convey this message before I leave. Will Will you take a second to listen? He, uh, I'm guessing you're away from the finish again. So roll reflex again. See if you get hit again. 18. You, you're prepared after getting hit once. You're like, you you kind of dodge it a little bit. Um... <laughs> he he looks at you and 
as you continue to persist and not disappear like all the other ones, he he starts to kind of growl and he goes, Is you not gone? Well, speak your words and leave, or I will burn this castle down. I, I'm sick of this this torture. And then he grabs another keg and starts drinking. At this point, you realize he is down to just two more kegs. Dad, I do like Sprite. I, I drink that and then like... Alright, this time I, I just want to start talking. Uh, I want to be like, oh, you're not going to burn this castle down. Where else will you go? The king I knew wouldn't burn this castle down. What it... Well, how will you get you alcohol if you burn this place down? There's how many people like this is a this is a thriving place. One, you know, not what it once it used to be, but still, like, there's plenty of money coming in and out. Like, who would all, what all would uh, happen here? I mean, between all the merchants, between all the guards, the everyone who swears to protect you. To, uh, you know, um, oh shit, I was trying to think of a smooth way of saying it. Uh, hell, even those, the lower city, like, it, it's not even bad, uh, um, whether it's, you know, the, 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 the many populace around here, are you just gonna burn them all too? You might as well at that point. Yeah, screw it. Burn Diane too. Uh, as you're talking, I made a couple rolls on my side, but um, as you're talking, you start to see kind of like flames start to billow out as he's drinking, like little little wisps of flames as you continue to point out things about his city and point out things you think he should do and you think he should cherish and you're kind of like nagging at his pride a little bit so and as you're finishing up and you say the words diane the flames actually like burst the barrel that's in his hand and it explodes um <laughs> you see the fumes of alcohol kind of like steaming off of his face hey uh, he's like just there, there is no confusion right now. He's glaring at you with just sheer anger as he screams in his drunk voice, You bring up that witch. She has no right to rule me. You bring her name into my castle. And you start to see, like, the draconic form is now just completely taking his face. He's got golden scales down his entire body. He's not fully morphing you notice that for some reason he seems to still be stuck in a humanoid form but he's got his scales he's got the elongated snout and he is standing from his throne i will give you one chance to basically save your character right now um well when i stand my ground two I go, That's yeah, I know. Mom's name, Jay. She terrorizes me too. But I could still have. Yum, yum. He looks at you and he goes, okay, hold on. I'm actually going to make a roll for this. Uh, you make a charisma roll as well. It's going to be god awful. Oh, a 17. Not too horrible. You're not around um, me right now. <laughs> he looks at you and he goes, you, um, you feel like the the heat radiating off of him and you see the uh the barrels starting to boil and he goes you don't know torment hallucination you need to disappear and he kind of starts like you see him taking a big inhale of breath and he shoots his fire into the ceiling doesn't quite aim at you, but you don't know if that's because he doesn't want to cook you or if he's just so drunk he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. 
but uh you as the ceiling starts to cook you basically have the choice of staying and trying to continue to talk to him or running as the gold that this castle is made of literally starts to melt and drip down towards the ground. Um, well, I figured if he just caught the ceiling on fire, it would take a second. Um, it, this is dragon fire we're talking about, man. True. All right, well, I want to do this. <clears throat> I want to go, all right, now I have your attention. Two things. So I'm going to say say my piece and then book it, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I go to him. I'm like, okay. Uh, do I know his actual name? Do I remember his actual I, name? I don't even know if I ever gave him a name. He was always just the golden dragon. I go, all right, your highness. Two things. One, there is a parish led by a typhling in the lower sector that is looking to overthrow you in the future. Nothing now, but maybe want to nip that in the butt too. I don't care what you care about. I'm just saying, like, if you burn the castle, you might as well burn the whole town. And three, the raids that have been tormenting the lower, uh, the lower hill, they're coming for you at the end. So... Either it's either you have help defending this city or it's going to be a hundred against you. Uh, I want you to make three reflex saves, one for each statement that you make. Net 20, nice. Uh, 16, and a 10. So you got this adrenaline pumping, right? You know him, you know you're attached to him, and you're also Sarah Snow. So you're you're pushing your limits, right? Of course. And at first, the adrenaline keeps you going, and you dodge a glob. The second time, you're 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 still pumping, but you're getting a little over cocky because you dodged a little bit, and you miss you you manage to dodge again, but slightly. The third time, a glob of gold falls, and it lands. Uh, are we saying Sarah is right hand dominant or left hand dominant? Uh, right hand. I thought. I think. Okay, so I I don't know. It's your character. It lands on your left hand, and it doesn't just burn. This gold seems to somehow coat the entire back of your left hand. Uh, you don't know what this is going to do yet. You cool. don't feel any damage, but you you it kind of freaks you out a little bit. And like you said, you were planning on saying your piece and booking it. So once that gold lands on your left hand and kind of like covers only your the back of your left hand, you book out the door. Can can, can but, I can can I yell as I'm leaving? I hope to talk to you soon. <laughs> Do you, boo boo? Okay. You, you yell that as you're leaving, but as you walk out the door, you notice as soon as you close the door, the temperature relaxes, almost like that room is somehow sealed from the rest of the castle. You don't see any fire coming out of the room. You don't see any problems. It's it's almost like it's its own little bubble in space and time. And you, the guards are they're they're passive. They're they're pa They're just standing there. They're, uh, and they look at you and they're like, "You're you're you're alive." Well, did not see that coming. Okay, 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 okay. Th they say that, but I want it to look like like you know you're sprinting out and then like you break through a door and then you kind of like just shuffle up to a walk and be like. Whew. Was not expecting that, <laughs> but but like okay. just just like play it off cool, like uh, as I get to them, be like okay, yeah, uh, they, okay. Well, your life for now, they say as they look at you, and you notice that the guard in front of you is not the guard that brought you in. Uh, it's actually the captain of the guards that you remember striking your arrow from the sky as you tried to save the pedestrians who were um, set to be killed. Oh, okay. Uh, he looks at you and he goes, so what craziness 
made you decide to cock your way into this area. And you see his hands on his sheath. He's got it kind of like flicked up a little bit like warriors do to loosen their blade in their sheath. Um, I go, you know, I ask myself that every time I wake up in the morning. But no, I, you know, just had to give a warning. No one would give it. So I asked them to bring it so I could give it. You know, I had a message to pass on. And the only, apparently the only way that it would actually get to the king was if I delivered it myself. So here we are. He looks at you and he goes, well, here nor there, whatever craziness brought you here. Hold on, let me shut my phone off. <coughs> you're here and you're wanted. And I am supposed to kill you on sight. Yo, how about the fact that I uh, survived a meeting with the king allows me to go back to the slums in one well piece. see normally i'd probably give you that but you're not wanted by the king you're wanted by the court uh the king as much as he is in power and his word is still the law of this land i doubt he actually cares if you live or die especially since you have molten gold running down your fingers right now. So something tells me you survived by the skin of your teeth. I want to acknowledge it when he says it. Be like, kind of like I forgot that it was there. Oh. oh. Yeah, that's nothing. Um, Wait, I, I never was told. Why am I wanted? For, um... Uh... I don't remember why. Oh, because you shot the arrow. And he saw you. So, for basically... He says, for trying to interrupt the, interrupt the execution of a wanted criminal, uh, and for shooting an arrow in the proximity of the guard, of cap, captain of the guards, which is me. Uh, and luckily enough, you didn't actually hit me or them, because then it really would be kill on sight, and not just detain for later execution. And then on top of it, you and your little friend have been running around the low parts, stirring up re hope and peace and prosperity. And you know damn well, once these people get their power, they're coming up here and they're going to come after our nobles. And you're going to make me slaughter hundreds of innocents to protect these people. I I'm kind of astonished, like taken aback by that. And I go, hold up, hold up. First of all, well, I, I was trying to save innocent people. And given your second half of your statement, you re you knew that they were innocent. Um, and second of all, because you weren't doing that good, you didn't actually do that good of a job. One of the people that, and I put in like air quotes, be like, I attempted to save who, you know, wasn't actually on that, is right now kind of creating a, uh, um, it's going to be creating a revolution in the nearby, or near to come. Yeah, and when he creates that revolution, and, you know, that person comes to this hill, that means all the innocents he brings with, I'm going to be ordered to kill. And that's, not my fault. That is entirely because of you three. I, I go, why don't you just go kill him now? Cut it, cut, cut the head of the snake off now. Then you won't have to deal with it at the end. Because he hasn't done anything to make me kill him. I don't kill unless I have to, girl. But you were willing to kill innocent. Okay, never mind. That'll be, uh, that'll be when I have to kill them. I will have no choice. Once they step foot on this ground and threaten the rulers, I will be ordered to kill them, and I will have no choice. At this point, I don't have to kill them. Don't you, A man wait. can hope that the future doesn't happen. Don't you give the orders? 
No, I take the orders from the nobles. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm still remembering or figuring out how this city works nowadays. He looks at you and he goes, he just shrugs. Uh, he goes, you know what, girl? You have two choices. You come peacefully, you meet with the nobles, and we see if we can settle this without you dying, or you resist, and I cut your head free from your body now. Hey, wait, wait, can you, can you repeat that? I wasn't quite sure. So I'm supposed to follow you, or you're going to attack me? Either you follow me peacefully, or yes, I will not just attack you. I will kill you. And at that point, he draws his blade fully from its sheath. Your choice, girl. Make it now. I'm impatient. I, I'll say I'll go peacefully, but, um, damn, he drew it a lot quicker than I was expecting. Actually, I was just stalling. Um, but I'm like, yeah, you, uh, you're not that very, uh, you know, lawful of a. Captain. Uh, he goes, I am lawful. I follow the rules. The rules are what are given to me. Yeah, but where's the... I, I, I just do that. Just fine. Let's go. He keeps his blade out, not trusting you. And he leads you down paths that you remember from your history and he leads you to what you remember to be the actual meeting hall where you met the king several times before when he was still a good king as you're walking though you feel um, a rumble and the captain goes what in the world did you do girl he hasn't let out that much fire in years almost broke the space he's been put in <laughs> Uh, I kind of lift my hand to show him, like, him and I are two pieces of a pod. And I kind of chuckle. He looks at you and he goes, that is not the right answer, girl, but we'll find out if you survive the next five minutes. Luckily, you might have been easier off if you just let the king cook you. His fire is hot enough to kill you instantly. These nobles will take pleasure in your torture. Uh, sure. You say that. The king can never kill me. He just shrugs and goes, whatever, girl. And then after he's finished talking, he opens the door to the to the meeting chamber that you remember. By and the way, instead of the... I, I, I'm saying this full well knowing that they have no idea that I know the king. Like, on yeah. a more personal level. Yeah, I know. That's why he just said whatever. So uh, he he goes. Uh, he opens the door, and instead of the throne, you remember, you see like on the ch on the stairs, all below the throne, there's this uh, platform that's been built up out of solid gold, of course. And on the platform, there's five other chairs. Each elegant and designed in its own rights to look mighty as if a throne, but not quite as elegant or rich as the throne itself. I kind of like look around in amazement. As you're uh, looking around, the guard captain drops to a knee. And he goes, great courts of Golden Hill. I have brought you one of the wanted. This be Sarah Snow, a ranger, known for her skills as bow maker and her skills in diplomacy as well, having stopped several 
fights from breaking out in the city as well as inspiring the rabble to defend themselves again. She is here for her crimes of interrupting a lawful execution, uh, disobeying the order of the nobles by interrupting said in lawful execution. And other hijinks among the city. I don't actually know the word, so I'm just going to say hijinks. I know there's an official word for it. General mayhem. Yeah, that works. All right. Well, once he gets done, I'm like, God, that takes forever. Hello, uh, your honors, and I take a knee. In a in a bow. They look at you and they go, "You speak very callously, girl. You know who you are in front of." Um. At that point, I actually want to. I want to stand up, and I'm like, um. No. Honestly, I was more scared in the last room I was in. But can can, can I take a second? I'm trying to take all this in. It's not how I remember it as I look around the room. They they look at you stunned and I go, remember it? Girl, you've never been here. You can't be a day over... 25. How do you claim to have been in this chamber? I go, um, well, realizing that the, my, uh, uh, oh, sorry. That's a different time. No, no worries. I'm just, just looking. And they go, well, take it in for, we see no reason to prolong the life of a criminal. And instead of risking a public execution where the rabble can insist on rescuing their hero, they say with very audible air quotes, the, we should just have this captain here finish you here and now and then have a servant clean your blood from the floor. Um, I, I, t I just take a second and keep looking around, you know, uh, but I want to let them know that I did hear them and I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, it doesn't matter that the people I was trying to save were innocent because your captain failed at his job. That's fine. That's not what I'm here to argue or anything for that matter. Um, does the fact that I saved the people in the lower hill twice matter to you at all? Or do you guys just care about upper golden hill here? Get you to go, you have saved no one, girl. You may have stopped two raids, but the raids will get worse. They always get worse. We had finally hit a point where they had stopped growing and just allowed us to live. Yes. The people of the Lower Hill suffered. Yes, the rabble were poor and broke and desperate. But there were no more giants attacking us. There were no more griffins raiding our walls. There were no more beholders hypnotizing and confusing our men. What you have done, girl, is swiffen the defeat of all of us. Uh, I want to I wanna pick their brain. So uh, I want to ask them, so what started these raids, honestly? No one knows. None of us were alive back then. We only know that they started 70 years ago and got worse every time we defended the walls. Which is why we pulled our golden knights back to the capital. And which is why we left the lowers to settle as they would. To keep... From the rate to keep the rates from growing so strong that we could no longer defend ourselves. All right, so you guys were scared. That's fine. I mean, I, I get it. But I mean, who are you guys without the lower population, you know, supporting you? And I, I kind of say that like, like dwindling off in that, 
It's just like I get quiet and not to a mumble, and I'm like, um, yeah. Yeah, at the at that rude comment towards the court, you see one of the five kind of like raises top two fingers, and before you even have a chance to think, you you slightly hear the shink of a sword. And you feel the captain's blade pressed into your neck, and you can feel blood dripping down the blade. And they go, girl, the only reason we haven't killed you yet is because we see a chance for profit. Stop these defenses, as you keep putting them. Let our rabble swallow back down to their holes. And maybe do some trading with us as you adventure around Golden Hill. And we'll let you live. Keep this up. And keep continuing to raise the hopes of those already doomed. And we will strike you down here. Uh, at this, though, uh, roll perception check. Oops. 15. So you see that the main one who's been talking, the guy in the middle, he sits taller than everybody else. And he's the one that's only, he's the only one that's been talking. And he's the one who raised his fingers for the captain to unsheathe his blade, everything. You see on the faces of the other four, two of them are kind of like nodding in and out of sleep. Like none of this really matters to them. One of them is nodding his head in agreement, and he's like, he's obviously very excited about you, you know, being killed. And the other one, actually, the she's the only female on the on the on the council. She looks down and to the right, and she kind of like mumbles softly. Um, you see, uh, you can kind of read her lips, and you see her mouth the word "sorry," but that that's all you get out of her, and. She kind of like after she does that, you see her head like look straight ahead again, and her face kind of blank out, all emotion gone. Okay. Um, I want to try to look mostly unfazed at the fact that the captain put his sword at my neck. Mm -hmm. Um, I kind of want to like look down at it maybe like notice the blood like running down and then look mm -hmm. at the guy who won't stop talking um and like and just be uh i want to say i'm sorry i missed the first part you want me to do what up here he scoffs and he goes must i explain everything to these commoners stop defending Lower hill. I Let heard that him... part. The other part, you you wanted me to help something up in this part of the town. Oh, trade with them. Um, yeah. Sh sorry, I lost the whole snootiness. But train or trade? With trade. Trade. Them. Trade. Like oh, you go on adventures, pick stuff up, bring it to them. Sell with it the to them okay. only. It, I heard. I yeah. heard train, and I'll, that's why I got confused. Trade. So, they want me to trade with them, stop the defenses, otherwise I die? Yeah, pretty much. I go, um, what goods do you need trade for? Well, you bring us precious artifacts, you bring us gold, you bring us whatever you find on your adventures, and we'll allow you to live. I go, I kind of think to myself, I'm like, how, how would that work if El Cap, if El Capitan is, over here is uh, always trying to kill me once I get into town? As well, if you sign a contract of employment with us and follow our instructions, the warrant will be dropped. And you will be allowed in. And you will be allowed to prosper. 
and grow as you help us prosper and grow. I, I, uh, I, I want to be as courteous when I say this. And I want to be, um, well, I don't know if I can sign the contract. Since the last time I was at, I was here, I mean, you weren't even here. So I don't know how valid that contract would be if I would leave, come back, and you're not here again. He looks at you and smiles. He goes, there is no one here who can get past the Golden Guard. We will be here. I go, um, and I, and I take a, I take a moment. I'm like, well, that's not reassuring because you weren't here last time, but if it makes you feel warm and cuddly, then, sh or comfy, then I can sign that. I can sign, you know, I can trade you my, uh. A, f a for sure buyer for my special artifacts. You see the greed light up on this guy's face. And he goes, ah, I'd love to hear the artifacts. And as he says that, roll a perception check. 18. Okay, he sees you. Or you not he sees you. You see him. He kind of runs his hands down his fingers, but as he says the word artifacts, he stops on a ring that's on his right ring finger. And then he continues on down his hand and he. Hey, mommy, so so uh, you, you notice that little pause as he says the word artifacts, but then he continues on and he goes, good, good, good. And you see this. um. Servant comes scurrying in after you agree. And on his, he's got this little pedestal with a quill and ink, and there's a contract. And do you actually want to read the contract or no? Do you have it written out? I was just going to say it. Sure. I'll read it. Uh, so you read the contract, and in the contract it states, for the price of her life and her continued allowance to enter the capital portion of Golden Hill City. Sarah Snow has agreed to stop defending the populace as well as only trade with the council for artifacts or valuables found upon her travels. In agreement to this, she has become a bonded servitor to High Counselor. I don't have a name for him because I suck at names, people. And will only sell to High Counselor. If breaking this contract, Sarah Snow has agreed that her life has become worthless and will accept the consequences upon her as assassins and others will be sent to take her life from her in payments of breaking this contract. I, um... This seems a little steep, doesn't it? He looks at you and he goes, well, it's your life, girl. What is it worth to you? I mean, you guys have wanted me for like the last, what, three months, but you didn't send assassins to me beforehand. Why would you send assassins to me now? Because you had the gall to enter my area, he says with pure anger. In his tone. At that, I want to sternly turn around, cross my arms, and I'm like, um, last I checked, this was the king's area. He laughs. Uh, a loud, boisterous laugh. That drunkard, the only reason he is still king is he won't die. And if we even every time we've tried to kill him, he just continues to order his alcohol. <laughs> 
This is my city, girl. This is my town. This is my castle. And you will do as you are told. Or I will kill you, he says with a lighthearted tone at the end. I go, um, okay, keep telling yourself that. But I'll, I mean, I'll sign this. But at the end of the day, the king's word is high rule. Well, if the king ever comes out of his comfy little booze addled state, then we will see what his word is. But for now, my word is law. I, I, I lift my hand, I'm like, okay, Mr. Too much power in his head. Does uh does my hand count as an artifact? Yeah, it's just common gold, girl. I would not cut your hand off for that, for I'd be risking what you might find on the outside. Oh yeah. You know, okay. Thank God. I thought I was gonna have to donate my hand to something worthless. He scowls at you and he goes, you're pushing it. You keep this attitude whether you sign that contract or not. I will behead you. Uh, I, I, I start to walk out. And uh, Did you sign it or no? I did sign it. Okay. While he was uh, talking, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, so you sign it and he kind of grunts. And um, you start to hear him whisper to his counselor friends. You hear one guy kind of go, oh, what, 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 oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course, I come through, of course, of course, of course. And you don't hear any feminine voice, so you don't know if she's speaking or not, but you know you can't hear her. And the captain kind of, like, shoves you out the door. She's his blade. He goes, you play with fire, girl. Hang on, hang on. I wanna, before, you can keep doing what you're doing, but I want to say something as I'm leaving. Okay. I, uh... So, like, I, I sign and I start walking back to the captain or whatever. And, like, as he's, like, escorting me out, I want to call back to the, um, the person who's in charge, in quotation marks. And I want to yell to him and be like, um, for your sake, you want to hope that the king never stops drinking. You don't really hear anything in response. That's fine. I, I, I figured but, uh, I'd be ki getting kicked out the door at that time. But yeah, uh, like I said, you, you get pushed out the door, and guard captain says, "You play with fire, girl. If you hadn't signed that contract, help. I'm surprised even if you had signed that contract, he didn't order me to kill you." Well, I mean, this wouldn't be fair. You sprung your sword. I mean, uh, as a uh, a noble diplomat. A diplomat right here. I mean, what uh, what pride is that? I do what I can. If you want to kill me, we can have you know a nice sword fight. But what 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 he, what's the point of living if you don't live on the edge? He looks at you actually with like severe disgust in his face, and he goes, "I don't want to kill anybody, girl. I told you, I don't like killing people, but I do what I'm ordered." I don't want no fair duel with you. I just want to live my life and support my family. And if you make me kill you, then I will kill you. Fair or not. I, 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 Sarah responds like, you say that, but you also sound bloodthirsty. Like, it's, you're too far to one side, man. Like, I, I want to say it like jokingly, but seriously, like. You say one thing, but the way you talk and act, like, you're a little bloodthirsty. He goes, no, girl, no. I am hardened. I am not bloodthirsty. I do what I must, and I will always do what I am ordered. The law is the law, and right now, the High Chancellor is the law. I will follow that to my dying day. Uh, at this point, you guys have walked, like, to the entrance of the castle. And he goes, enough of this, girl. I don't like you. I don't think you're going to live very long. And I'm damn sure you're not going to follow that contract you signed. 
So I'll see you again. And we'll just see who lives and who dies. Um. Uh, well, yeah, that that's most likely true. Um. My fa my parting wish, my parting words to you, would be. Don't trust the that high council, sir. The the one man, he's not right in the head. And as what I said to him is as true to you. If you follow him, like thick and thin. For your sake, I hope the king keeps drinking. So, at a time in, in the future, you're going to have to make a decision. High council or king. And if you knew what I knew, you would bet on the king. There he goes. I bet on the law, girl. Now get out of here. And he, uh, he uh, closes the door behind you as he uh, says that last word. Kind of like hard enough that you feel the pressure as it kind of pushes you down the stairs a little bit. So can I just like walk through Golden Golden Hill back down to the lower hill? Yeah, until you break the contract, you're free. There is no warrant on your head right now. Hmm. Mm. I want to look at the shops. There are no shops up here. This is the noble district. Uh, there are merchants up here, but they're merchant families. They don't sell goods up here. They just, this is where they live. That's boring. All right. I guess I'll make my way down to the lower hill. Do I see the guard that uh, brought me up there? No, you don't know what happened to him. Um, part of you feels like he may have been punished for bringing you here instead of just killing you. Another part of you doesn't really know or honestly care, I'd imagine. No, I kind of wanted to thank him, but all right. Yeah, I'll just, uh, I guess I'll make my way to the inn. Slowly but surely. I want to admire and see what's this, or try to re recollect what was there. <laughs> And see what's the same and what's different. Uh, well, you notice that it's it's all pretty much just gilded houses and manors surrounded by the wall with the golden caps golden castle in the center. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh then I take my stroll and stuff and then I, I make my way to the inn. Um, well, yeah, like I said, that's pretty much all I wanted to do today. I wanted to handle that whole thing. And not going to lie, there was two or three points where I thought you were going to force me to kill Sarah. <laughs> oh, is this meta-wise? Yeah, meta-wise. Like, yeah, there was a couple points there where I was like, he's going to force my hand and I'm going to have to fucking kill her. <laughs> Gee whiz, that was crazy. Uh, I knew what I was doing. No, you didn't. <laughs> I mean, I had an idea of what I was planning, but like whether he killed me or not, that was as much as he let. It was all dependent upon how much you let on of you being frustrated. Well, me personally, I'm not frustrated. I actually think it went really well. I, was just, I meant, I, I meant I, like I, character wise that when the character got frustrated, you weren't oh, yeah. necessarily portraying that that well, but I thought I did pretty good in some points. Oh. I could, I, I could, I could metaphorically feel you trying not to tighten that noose. You're like, oh, Sarah keeps pulling on it. Ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There were, like I said, there was two or three points where I was legit, like one or two more crass words, and like you'd be straight up dead. Yeah, you, you know, you, you're abrasive, but yet you're cut, but yet you're polite. Like they partially offset. As long as you're twice as polite as you're abrasive. Because people always remember the abrasive parts. Yeah, I guess. Okay, well. I make my way to the end. You make your way to the end. We're going to call it there for tonight. I'm wrecked. So I hope you guys enjoyed the nail-biting Sarah Snow pushing the limits in Golden Hill City. 
And uh, now I got to figure out assassins because I know damn well you're not going to keep that contract I made you sign. There's a lot to that fucking contract. Yeah, I know. But that's the guy. Like, I was eventually, meta wise, I was eventually going to have you guys come up against him and uh, have to either overthrow him or befriend him or change him or however you guys wanted to do it. But he's been in my plans for a while. He's basically like the the second in command that became power hungry after the king got drunk. I can tell. And now he runs everything and he owns everything. Kind of like he, he was going to be the he, he still is essentially the big bad of Golden Hill. I can tell. So, yeah, I just wasn't planning on bringing him in so soon. How long were you going to wait, man? Uh, Probably another two or three raids. Jesus. Once once the raids got to the point where it was really pushing you guys, I was going to bring him in. You said yourself that you almost killed us last time on your own words. Like, how long? This guy, I want to tell everyone watching, this guy took, what, Four months worth of work and just summarized it into a week in a recap. Like, I was so pissed about that. <laughs> like, I yeah. I done so much work for those listed folk. And then all of a sudden, they just both. erased this off. You and me both. Oh, okay, That Jus was frustrating. Jusilla helped. I kept them alive, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I was, I was still putzing around with my campaign when I had you guys doing those, but I I think I've got it set and solid now, so um, no more four months worth of work being recapped in one week, I promise. Can, can we uh message back and forth on the gold-plated hand now? All right, after uh, actually, I was going to bring it up next week. I got to figure out how I'm going to make this affect you. Um, It's going to be there's going to be a debuff to it, but it's also something storyline-wise. Um, I'm going to have it tying in a little bit more with your character. I have to iron out some of the details myself. But, okay. um, well, yeah. I, I don't want you to get this wrong, so if you need help, let me know. Because the last time you to tried to my... tie something in with my character, you were way off mark. So You don't want me to get my campaign wrong, huh? From past yeah. from past experiences, yes, that's exactly okay. it. Since the last time you tr you tried to integrate this, my backstory and you completely this missed. This isn't about your backstory. This is about your connection to the Golden Dragon. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> well, if you if you need your any backstory help. is the other stuff I've been trying to like push at you, and we've had our private messages about that I'm not going to bring up for. Yeah, that makes sense, reason. but. Yeah, I, I, I'm just referencing the one time you tried to bring in something connected yeah. to my backstory and it was way off mark. Yeah, I fucked up the city. I know I did. It happens. I fixed it. No. I fix All it. I remember is Kenny trying to bring up your backstory. And you being like, that's cool. What were we doing? <laughs> <laughs> that's. Yeah, that I, sounds I about right, because it was in my past. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, that's fine. At least it's a shorter session. So, any outro, DM? Yeah, uh, yeah. like I said, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, look forward. We've got a few more weeks of construction and training in the city since uh, the group decided to stay. I'll try to do at least a couple weeks of grinding through next week. We'll see how the role playing works out and how long it takes. But um hopefully within two, maybe three more sessions we'll be looking at our next big raid. Two All sessions right. before the next Jesus. Okay. Well, oh. see you guys. Okay. <laughs> see ya. Hey guys. What? Nope. Like, All right. See you guys. Part. Let me let me quit my recording before you say what you're about to say. Yeah. Because I know what he's about to say. <laughs>